the Mubarak regime, I mean, now the Sisi regime has sent to prison TikTok women, as they're called. These are women with massive platforms on TikTok because, and they're saying they, they're doing this in the name of the Egyptian family's honor, right? Or Egyptian family values, yeah? These are mostly working class women. So this is now gender and class together. At the same time as they're imprisoning these women who are very popular on TikTok, the, uh, the CC regime is also um, either imprisoning or ignoring women who have exposed sexual violence. And they're using social media to do that. So this is a moment now where I, my advice to Egyptian women is to recognize that you now are the vanguard of the feminist revolution that we have been waiting for. So our entire conversation now, you and I, Gaia, is to bring us to this moment, that we are now finally on the threshold of the feminist revolution. Because now we can see how State Street and Home come together so well to basically use our bodies to fight over for each of them fighting for power. And all revolutions, most definitely including Egypt's, will fail unless this feminist revolution is understood to be the heart of the revolution. So my advice for Egyptian women now is fight, fight and fight. You will be hurt, yes. You might go to prison, yes. You will be killed, maybe. But that's what happens in a revolution because there is no revolution that happens without a price because no one is gonna come and liberate you. You have to liberate yourself. We can't protest in Egypt right now, but we can use social media. In the run up to the 2011 revolution, social media was really powerful as a form of organizing, as a way of finding other comrades and forming solidarity. Now, social media is a way to organize, find others' uh, comrades, and I, I now say that we can't protest on the streets in Egypt, but I, I consider social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, anything, as basically virtual streets. Like, and so instead of marching on the, the streets of Cairo or Aswan or Alexandria, march on the virtual streets of social media because they are just as real, they are just as powerful and own this revolution because Egypt needs a feminist revolution. That's beautiful and encouraging. My last question to you would be, do you regret taking part in this? Are you sad that the revolution happened because it turned certain, um, certain conditions worse than they were before? I'm sad and enraged at the murders that have happened at all the people we loved and who are our friends that we lost. Um, I'm sad and enraged that the jails of Sisi are filled with at least 60,000 political prisoners. I'm sad and enraged that since the revolutions, Sisi has built more prisons than schools and hospitals. And I'm sad and enraged that he took away the streets. The street will always be ours, but I'm never ever, and I will never ever be sad at being a part of this revolution because the revolution in Egypt was the dream of my life. I waited for that revolution for more than 20, for more than half my life, you know? So I am thrilled and excited and honored and so happy that I was a part of this revolution and I will not stop. I will fight forever until we liberate Egypt from the regime, from patriarchy, from all forms of oppression. I will not stop fighting until everyone in Egypt is free. I will not stop fighting until Egypt is free. And I will not stop fighting because I know we will be free. This is a really difficult anniversary because things are not great. But I know that one day we will be free. And I know that one of the reasons that we will be free is because of what happened in 2011. That's great. I'm so glad you're ending on a hopeful note because I think a lot of people want to hear want to hear some hope during this difficult time. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for speaking with us. It's been a real honor and um, pleasure on my part. Hi, now, good luck editing this because I went, I talked and talked and talked. So good luck. I don't envy you.